Hello everyone, so today we're gonna do a quick video on what we're doing in the garden today, and that is fertilizing our roses. And with fertilizing also comes a great time to spray your roses down for any diseases or insects, especially when you're gonna do that next flush and they start to put on some new tender growth. You wanna nip that right in the bud really, really quick. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and see what Angie's doing. She's already fertilizing, and just to throw it out there real quick, we're in a region where it's definitely time to fertilize our roses, and it's usually around the after the first flush or second flush, we have a couple roses that already did their second flush, like Gertrude Jekyll. So we wanna go ahead and put some fertilizer in there before the rain starts coming down. That has delayed us a couple days from actually wanting to do this a couple days ago. But we wanna go ahead and get some fertilizer in there today before the rains come again, and then water them really good so that way that fertilizer gets into that root system. So let's go ahead and head over to where Angie's at because she's already getting started on the roses. So Angie is over there already fertilizing. Which rose is that again? This is Claire Austin. So Claire Austin, we're fertilizing Claire Austin. Now, what we're using to fertilize is rose tone. That's something that we've been using for our roses since uh, the beginning of time, since we started getting these uh, David Austin roses. And we have a couple other introduction roses that you might have seen in the last video, which were the Brewing Winners roses. We're gonna do the same thing for that, but um, I know we always get a lot of questions as far as how much fertilizer to use. The bag is normally gonna tell you how much to do, and it's gonna be a lot more than what we're doing here because we have container roses. As you can see in the scoop there, it's not that much. The bag is gonna tell you for a rose in the ground, you're gonna wanna pots. use, you know, or, uh, or in pots. For a rose in the ground, you're gonna wanna use about a cup and a quarter of fertilizer um, around the root base because that, that rose is gonna actually gonna be in the ground. But because we have roses in containers here, you don't wanna use too much of it. You wanna use the right amount and that's basically what Angie just showed you right there, how much to put around that root base. And this is Lady of Shalot. She's putting on a lot more growth. Yep. So we're gonna start training her again. And um, she's trying, but yeah, she, needs, yeah. she needs some help. So she loves to bloom a lot. She has been doing a lot of blooming for us. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and um, give one of the new ones also some food here. And this one is... That I is Reminiscent is Crema. It's one of the new roses from Pru Winners. Uh, if you want to see any information on the new roses from Pru Winners, there's a video that we just put out. You can go and check that one out as well. And I'll tell you about the four new roses that we have from Pru Winners in here. Usually you don't um, feed the roses, new planted roses with this, but they've been in containers for, for, um, for quite a bit and flowering and doing their thing. So we're going to go ahead and just give them some extra some extra love, because they have been doing crazy in their nursery containers, blooming a lot. Definitely. All right, so Angie's doing Gertrude Jekyll there next. Gertrude Jiko, I keep saying that wrong after I learned exactly how to say it. I can say it like that. So it's Gertrude <laughs> Jiko. It feels weird for me to say it like that, but I know that's the correct way. Yeah, so we, we really didn't want to make this video too long, guys. So um, sometime throughout this video, we're going to go ahead and just uh, throw some music over it and uh, Running go out around of this and bag. fertilize all the roses because as you guys know we have quite a bit of roses and then we're going to do the uh the spraying uh in the garden and we're going to wait till it gets a little bit darker i believe because uh we don't want the sun to basically dry up any of the spray that we have on there but we also want it to be on there quite a bit so that way it has plenty of time to dry by itself and so we're going to wait till the sun comes down just a bit i know it doesn't look like there's much sun out here but we are in the shade here and I'll show you back there. There's plenty of sun out here, so we're waiting for that to come down. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. Uh, this is Olivia Austin. Oh, yes. She she just actually finished her second bloom, her second flush, and she's ready to start doing more. She's She never stops for us, so happy with her. And like Ambrose said, we'll, we'll come back and talk about, you know, the foliage and stuff when it's time to spray. Yep, so we're Guess gonna... what, we're gonna head out there and finish doing that. Like Ambrose, you told them what once the sun comes down, Yep. the spring, okay. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and head out there and uh, we're gonna continue doing the rest of the roses. All right, so we basically uh, can't stop talking through these videos. We're just gonna throw some music over and show you guys, but I think that's kind of boring at some point, so. Cause uh, you wanna know who we're fertilizing and probably wanna know how they're doing, even though they don't have flowers. Yep. You probably wanna know how, you know, how 
how big they are, what they're doing, what they're looking like. And I, I really do want to show them to you. So this is rolled down right here. Um, put a lot of growth since last year. Baby still second year, but yep. doing its thing. And it's bloomed like crazy, and it's going to bloom again. And he got attacked pretty bad with um, um, black spot. Um, very rare got hit by... Um, what was it? The beetles. Yeah, right now, there's the Japanese beetles that we have around. They're they're pretty soon they're gonna leave already. But that's that's who attacked him. He didn't get any of the soft fly. He didn't get any aphids. Um, what else? What else? With thrips. He yeah. didn't get any of that. Yeah, it was weird how how yeah. Rodal didn't get any of that stuff. But he was the last one to come into bloom for us. Yep. I think I have a photo up there. I can throw up there. If I don't, sorry, but I think I do. Okay. So let's head over here. We're going to the other one. So this year. Poor Gertrude got it bad. They yeah. did not, they, um, because of the, what was it, the thrips, the thrips and yeah. the beetles did away with all their foliage. Yeah. So. We had to cut back quite a bit. They are starting to put on more growth, which that's good. And um, I think they're going to do, they're doing another flush. We do have to go around and deadhead in a little bit before we spray. Yep. And take, and take off what we can of the black spot because I don't want to leave them completely, you know, without um, um, foliage. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. Who's next over here? We want to be real with you guys because um, I, I always see comments, you guys t telling us that how do we not get black spot? How is it always, you know, um, so so perfect looking the roses or not, guys? We get black spot a lot because we, we get a lot of rain. A lot of rain. So around this time is when it gets bad in the garden for us, for the for the roses and other plants too. Okay, so this right here, we were going to go ahead and put her in an obelisk. This is mill on the floss, but we didn't. Yep. We went ahead and said we're gonna go ahead and let her do its her thing. Um, not long ago, um, somebody told me that she was really, really, really good for the back of yeah. the of, 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 of a border. Um, of course, this is not like a big white border, but I said, why not? Let's just see what she does. And she is big. She likes it here a lot. Okay, and then, who, you wanna tell them about this one? Because he's not doing that great. Malinu is he's one of the- He's kinda coming back. Malinu is one of, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five roses that's in the ground. And for some reason, uh, I would think though it would, take much better but as you can see oh, this one I gotta move Molyneux I gotta move leaves and foliage and um, um, things from there yeah as you can see Molyneu is not doing that great and I, I'm not sure if it's maybe the ground there I, I can't really say it's what a ground though winter? because Harlow Carr is doing absolutely wonderful on that side over there in the garden and this one's just I think it was just the winter that got it um, but we had to prune off quite a bit off yeah, of him. Yeah, if you want to go back to one of the videos earlier this year where we did some rose pruning um, before the season, I did a hard prune on Molyneux because it just wasn't um, wasn't looking too great. Nope. And then what you got back there? So this right here is um, Teasing Georgia. Yeah, Teasing Georgia is a beautiful rose when in bloom. Uh, as you can see it. Up and the she wall got me right good. <laughs> Yeah, she, she seems to get you all the time. But as you can see, I'm gonna try to go in here real quick. There's plenty of buds growing everywhere. You can see that one right there. Um, she's ready to do a next flush also. And again, like I said, this is the best time to, to uh, fertilize your roses, especially when they're getting ready to bloom again. And I love that Angie, uh, we decided to put it in this box. Angie absolutely loves it right here because as you can see the sun Anytime it's golden hour, absolutely glows right in that spot. So when it was in bloom earlier this year, it just lit up the whole uh, side of the garden here on this side. And we got those beautiful hydrangeas that are helping out just as good. We should have gone to grab more of the roast tone. I almost forgot about the fertilizing around this time. Yeah. All right, guys, so as Angie's finishing this up, uh, just gonna tell you real quick, these are Hardo Car roses. So you can see those are looking pretty amazing. They're still growing, still putting on a bunch of buds, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and head over to the front while Angie does this, because if not, we can talk forever about roses and that's normally what happens. All right, and it looks like that's about it for the rose song on the very last rose, so. 
That's Strawberry Hill there. Poor Strawberry Hill, or the Thribs. Yeah. Really got to this girl. Um. So yeah, we need to. She's been flowering though. Thribs or no thribs, or I mean not thribs, the 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 Japanese beetles. Yeah, Japanese beetles. I'm sorry. Um, they love her. The Japanese beetles love this rose, and they just destroy all the foliage. Um, we'll do more talks about you know the roses. Right now, what we're gonna keep doing is um, um, as we're waiting for the sun to come down a little bit more to spray, we're gonna go around and deadhead and clear up some of the of the black spot. Yep. But before that, look guys, one of the roses from Proving Winners. There's a beetle in there. Where? Ah, they love the, the, the sweet smell. Yep. Look at that. Beautiful rose. And it's ready to give more. Okay, let's go ahead. It's, it's humid too. So we're <laughs> trying to get this done as fast as we can. So Ambrose did a boo-boo. Yeah, so <laughs> this is the second time I've done a video where my intentions were to show how exactly I mix this and I always do the calculations in my head so I rushed through it and Angie's like, I thought you were gonna show us some video and I completely forgot. But just so you guys know, uh, we use a product called Ivy Organic. This is a three-in-one plant guard. Um, if you want to know everything about it, we've done a couple of videos on this, but this is definitely what we're using to protect our foliage and uh, keep um, diseases and insects away from our plants. But it's a, uh, it's a powder form here that comes in this little paint can and a, uh, a small vial of oils that work in conjunction with mixing this up with water. Now each of these cans can make about five gallons of this mixture or um, it gives you the direct instructions to make a 23 ounce spray bottle. but the reason, like I said, I forgot was because it only gives you directions for a 23 ounce spray bottle and I do the calculations in my head for a two gallon container. So that's that, I completely forgot and Angie's been laughing at me the whole time. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with the, uh, with the spraying here in the garden. So Ambrose has started to spray everything with the IV Organics and that is one thing that I wanted to talk about. We not only do it for roses. I know this video, you know, we started fertilizing roses but we use it to fertilize, I mean, to, to spray the whole garden so it can protect all the foliage, especially here where we live. Here in Virginia right now at this moment, we're, we usually get a lot of rain around this time, but this year it just seems like we're getting a lot. And one of the things that I like to, um, I like to spray with um, using this product is the hydrangeas. We get a lot of rain and the hydrangea starts to put on that spot. I'm trying to find some of it that I already, let me get in there. Sorry guys. This right here. As it starts raining a lot and as you can see I have a lot of plants all gathered up here together in this little area. Well hydrangea leaves start to do, um, um, put on that black, that black spot or whatever you want to call it and we're trying just to spray them. The rain has caused other issues too. I have some of those right there that are we're starting to bloom and it's shriveled them all up, the flowers. Now, one thing you guys are gonna notice when you do this spray or while we're spraying at the same time, there's a milky white substance and that's just showing you the coverage that's actually um, happening all over your plants. That milky substance is what's gonna protect your foliage. And what the milky substance does, it protects the foliage from wind burn, um, Oh, sun scorch. Sun scorch or winter scallop when it's winter, but it definitely still lets the UV rays into your plants so they still get the nutrients that they need from the sun. Um, but that's that's pretty much how it works. And when you're spraying this, one thing you're gonna notice and don't be alarmed is that you're gonna see a lot of insects flying all over the place. And the reason for that is because some of the, some of the insects don't like the scents of the oils. And it's not a bad thing, it's not gonna kill them, but it's gonna distract them from actually getting back onto your plants. So don't be alarmed when you see all these yeah, insects th coming out. This is safe for all the, the, like the good beneficial insects that you know, we want in the garden. Um, but of course we do it right now just so we don't, we don't alarm them, like the little bees you know, that are out during the day. Um, but this does protect and help, it helps us a lot. In the beginning of spring, Everything just came down on us, all the thrips and the, um, what is it that we get, aphids? Yep. And it rains a lot in the beginning. 
um, a saw fly too. A saw fly is who, you know, who is the cause of so many of our roses being bare at the moment um, or tattered leaves. Um, and that's another thing that I want to let y'all know as as you fertilize, as, as you spray, I keep on wanting to say fertilize. As you spray, make sure to get the back of those leaves. Um, because behind it, a lot of those little critters hide, like soft fly hides in the back. There's where yep. the little worms, the little caterpillars are at. And they just start eating away, like right here. Yep, so after I spray the tops of the leaves, you can see a lot of this, this stuff, this damage is That's from, from the is spring. from the caterpillars that are eating from underneath the foliage. So you wanna turn around your nozzle or whatever spray you're using, and you wanna go ahead and get in there and spray the bottom of these leaves and make sure you get maximum coverage on your roses. That's how you're gonna detract insects from getting on there because they will stay on the backside of these roses and start to eat away at them. So this is what we're gonna be doing through the whole garden right now, not just the roses. You know, we're gonna um, protect our whole garden right now. Um, anything else you wanted to tell them before we continue? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Um, just uh, stick to stick to a plan when it comes to the roses, um, especially when it comes to a garden like we have here where we definitely invite an ecosystem into our garden. So you're going to attract all kinds of insects. And not to say that all insects are bad, but you're going to attract some insects. And sometimes you just don't want those insects to eat at your roses. So it's best to stay on a program uh, on fertilizing and spraying your roses to make sure you're getting maximum effort from your roses. And you know, you're still providing for the ecosystem as well. Now the spraying, because I know it comes up a lot, how many times do we do the spraying? Well, the spraying, um, we actually do it when we have a lot of rain, like those long, long, like, like we had recently, we've had a lot of rain, like probably what, going in two weeks here and there? Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we go ahead and do it again. We spray again um, just to make sure that it keeps it protected. But a lot of the roses are putting a lot more growth. A lot of the, 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 the um, hydrangeas, the microphylla hydrangeas, have put on a lot of new growth since the, since the time we for, um, spray them as well. So it, it was time to start spraying everything around here. Okay, so we're going to continue. You're probably going to see us getting out there and doing um, some of the rest of the, the plants. All right, guys. So this is why we are in a rush to get this spraying done and fertilizing. This is a newly planted hibiscus. And when I say newly, this was planted last fall. But as you can see, new tender growth on a new plant that's just setting its root in is one of the first ones to get attacked. So don't think that sawfly will attack just roses or other insects will just attack roses. They'll, they'll come at something else that's fresh and tender. And this is one of the biggest culprits we have in our roses and it's sawfly. I don't know if you can see that little worm there. I'll try to put an arrow on it maybe or circle it so you guys can actually see, but it's attacking this thing. And Angie did her best job. She came out here earlier to remove them all. Yeah. And so she's gonna get rid of that one as well. Where did you find it? It's back here. Oh, it's back there. So okay, that's... usually you'll see these little things. I just mush them and remove them. Yep. You'll see them on the back. And there's like right there, you see that little, it's yep. like hiding right there. And also what likes to eat the hibiscus is um, Japanese beetles. Yeah, so, so just, it's not, yeah. just to show you a comparison, that's a newly planted um, hibiscus there. And then here's one that's been established. As you can see that foliage has not been, well, I see a little bit of damage here, but really not much. It's trying to get it's there. It's trying to get there, but as you can see, the foliage on this one looks great. This wasn't, um, this was not like this this morning. Yeah. So it, it's finding its way. It hasn't hit the roses again. All of this that you see is from the, the, the past, uh, the growth from spring Yeah. on the roses. So that's why we want to do it before. It, this just spreads fast. Yeah. So that's gonna... why we want to hurry up and get it done right now before it rains again and we can't spray. Yep. <laughs> so he's rushing me to hurry up so we can just head indoors because definitely trying to get this video done with because not that I don't like garden, but I love homemade tortillas more than I do gardening. And there's some homemade tortillas inside waiting for him and, and some mole. mole. So yeah, definitely want to get this uh, this project. No, in all seriousness, we do want to get this done because as we showed you the soft light there, um, we want to get uh, we want to get at it early before 
you know, they start eating away at all the new fresh growth on the roses, especially because we want these roses to perform just like they did at the beginning of the spring and then giving it that fertilizer and some spray, it's definitely gonna be more beneficial to our roses here. Yeah, we didn't really get to, the, the soft fly and everything else got to a lot of the roses. Oh yeah. So early, even, you know, we weren't able to get to the spraying. There wasn't even leaves yet. There was oh. like barely little things coming out and I yeah. was already seeing um, the aphids and everything else popping up and I was yeah. like, we can't spray because it was it was barely sprouting and then rain was hitting, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the rain from spring, so that didn't help. And when we sprayed, it was already, it had already started. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> definitely want to get the spraying down. Like I said, th this product, it covers that foliage, it protects it from anything further and, and especially during this time of the year when we start to get a lot of rain here, a lot of this black spot and a lot of those brown spots on your hydrangeas actually come from the rain. And when I say rain, it's not actually the water. It's what, what happens is the rain hits every other plant and everything else in the garden and it pushes these spores up into the air and it spreads like crazy. And that's why you start getting brown spot, black spot, all this yeah. other stuff. Uh, in your garden and what this product's gonna do is gonna protect it, it's gonna create that, that white film around it, which which you won't see after a while, it's just gonna dry up and it'll be nice yeah. and clear, but so it's gonna protect it. He's gonna continue spraying. Yep. I brought brought out my trusty hip, hip truck. truck from Corona Tools that I love so much. Yeah. And here's where I do my deadhead and put it in there. Um, like always guys, you know, I have my little tools too that they send us. Um, this yep. is from the Bergen and Ball. I don't know what they're called, what you would call them. They're just like... Those are those are just small pruners. Um, the Bergen and Ball pruners. Uh, I love I, I'll, them. I'll link it in the description because that's something that we've I been using. I love these little things. They're very comfortable. Um, and I have my alcohol yep. and my rubbing alcohol and, you know, a little clean rag and just every single rose you yep. wipe it clean. Um, and all the... the, the the, what is it called? The, the, All the foliage. All the buds and the foliage. And that, the that we bad foliage just goes in here and straight to the trash can. Yep. And wash your things. Wash your yes. things. Clean your hands too after you're done. You don't yep. want to keep on spraying. But I got to say this year though, we're trying not to make it such a big deal because it's not. We just want to yep. enjoy the garden. And we're actually, this is one of our favorite things to do. Actually yep. come out here. I know it might look crazy for a lot of people, but <laughs> we love to do the especially the rose maintenance. Yeah. So that's it. Let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, we'll continue doing it. So that's gonna do it for the video, guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.